Hey, Amato here with Rhythmatic TV. We have Nico, the theater director of uh, the show that we just seen, Motivating Excellence. What's up, everybody? How y'all doing? <laughs> so how does it feel like being the final night, the last show? Like, was it what you saw in your mind? Did it come out the way you planned it? Um, a lot more. It was a lot more um, than what we originally envisioned. Um, but I think it grew to the epic proportions that it needed to. Yeah, it was very good, I thought, storytelling. So we aim to just tell a story, you know, and to make a statement, make a statement about the industry, what we need to do and keep going and just everybody just be an individual, be yourselves. Don't try to be a carbon copy, be yourself. Nice, nice. And it really is like you had these kids for three, you know, three months yeah. and you kind of like putting them into the jungle, Young into adults. the wild. Yes. Young adults. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we all say kids, the kids, the kids, even if you're 35, you're a kid. But yes, but yeah, we have them for three months and they go through intense training uh, four days a week, six hours a day, and they get everything from uh, street jazz, hip hop, uh, ballet, they have yoga, martial arts, they have theater with me, they have mock castings uh, to help them for commercials and film uh, auditions, you know, and the dance auditions where there's, you know, people doing things with Skittle and, you know, Power Aid and all that stuff. So it's some of everything. Yes. And how does it feel like working alongside Rap City? Like you know, it's something that's so natural. We have been, we're actually, we discovered each other that we were cousins. We're fifth generation cousins in college. It was really, really, really freaky, yes. Good thing I didn't want to date her, right? Right. <laughs> wow. But, you know, we discovered that on my grandfather's side. And we actually did shows back when we were 18 together. We were doing shows. So um, there was a time where we were doing that when we were younger. And then we both kind of spread apart, always stay connected, but, you know, branched off and did our own thing. She was on tour. I was on tour doing more theater things. She was doing the music industry, smashing. And life just brought us back together. You know, everything always happens full circle. And, you know, you never just forget home and where you come from. So that's how it kind of happened. So we came home and, like, let's get it together and send everybody out past that positive energy. So that's how it's been. It's you know. nice. And was you like in control of like finding the roles for the uh, dancers? Or? Everything is a collaborative effort. Everything is a collaborative effort. You know, Rhapsody meets with them for a while, you know, and then I kind of peek my head in and I'm seeing what's going on and I sit and I'm observing. You know, it's a lot of times just in rehearsal, just feeling the vibe from everybody. And like to select everyone's animal took about almost about two weeks actually. You know, people switch, you know, and then we had to find balance, things that were more theatrical than other animals. You know, like, for example, one of the dancers was going to be a koala bear. Um, very cute and adorable animal, but sometimes a koala just sits. And it's like, <laughs> you just look cute. So <laughs> we needed something else um, and just doing more research about all of that stuff. So it started to merge the dancer's personality and the characteristics of the animals. And it was like, yeah, it's like that. It's like that. And it was really about when they, the dancers did their research, bringing out what is it that they want to say in the industry. So when they go to their next audition for Gaga or the audition for Kelly Rowland or whomever, you know, what is it that they're bringing? What is it they're saying to that choreographer of that time? And, you know, making that statement, whether it's, you know, the punch or the kangaroo, you know, or whether it's the chameleon, you know. But, yeah, so it took, it took about two weeks for all of that stuff to solidify. Awesome. And what would you say would be your favorite piece from the show? Hmm. I know, right? Oh my God, the favorite piece. Mm. Mm. I, it, it, the whole show is the baby, but I will say, you know how you have a favorite part of your body? Like, you know, I love this, I love that. I would say that I really love the habitat section. I love the habitat section of the show when we really get to see all the animals in their habitat because it was more of a... Um, that part to me is, it was so interesting that we were able to capture the cinematic um, quality of Nature Going Wild and Discovery Channel because every, no matter how many times you see this show, when you look stage right, there's a different activity that's going on over here and stage left, there's a different activity with this chameleon. So you were, you were able as the audience member to scope in and zoom in and take this part of the story and expand your lens and then take this in, you know, so it was just a beautiful picture. So for that reason and seeing all the intricacies of that, I would say the habitat section, you know, but for the get it, get it, for the get it, get it, I love the destruction of the locust. You know, the locust swarm, that idea, the idea, we were like, okay, so how are we going to make everybody locusts? Uh, we got 23 people, but we need like a million, you know, but just, but that, 
the quickness of it all, you know, and then lights and, you know, the, uh, the video motion projecting with um, Angel Feliciano was beautiful and it, I think, added to, you know, the whole weight and impact of the show. Yeah. Like, this is not, for me personally and for, you know, my partner here, this is not a three-night thing. Like, I could see this on Broadway. Like, Work. And have you ever thought about doing this? Like, yes, bring it to... Absolutely. We had a couple of investors that came, and if there are any more investors out there, please hit us up at uh, motivatingexcellenceonline.com and um, invest. Let's put the money where it needs to be, you know. It's really just about change. It's really about providing, you know, consumers and people with something different. You know, I think with the state of the economy and, and the world in general, there's a lot of stuff going on and people just need entertainment. People need joy, they need laughter, and also a different, yes, imagination and a different um, scope, a different perception. Because sometimes we get so bogged down, we get bogged down and this is the way it has to be and this is the only way we can do it. You can only be famous by doing this and being on TV is the only way that your family deems you as successful. You know, when it's not, it's really about the independent artists. You know, when you're out on the grind and you're hustling and you're moving and making it happen like that. So that's what Motivating Excellence is all about. Me, me and you and all that kind of stuff. Yes, hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. That's what's up. Yeah. Here you have it, guys. The model here, Nico, Rhythmatic TV. Motivating excellence. And I'm a fan. I like the rhythm. <laughs> Thank you.